the Americans look to regain respect that they certainly lost in their last World Cup qualifying campaign against the Mexican side and it's missing some of their key players along the way. Hello everybody, Mike Watts, Tyler Terran, 71 degrees in Chicago. I think everyone was looking forward to seeing this as a measuring stick for both Greg Verhalter and Tata Martino's squads. It's a measuring stick for both squads because you would make the argument that both squads are in a rebuilding phase. For Mexico, there's no real excuse to not win this tournament. For the United States, they have oh so much to prove after missing out on the World Cup last summer. But as Greg Berhalter said, these are the types of games you can't take a playoff. It requires that amount of focus if you are going to come out of victor. And I think we're going to see an absolute firecracker tonight. Mexico got by Costa Rica and Haiti. Curacao and Jamaica in the knockout stages for the U.S. setting up the final. proximity that tie these two countries together. In CONCACAF, they are the two giants. And tonight, they meet in the 15th ever Gold Cup Final. Mike Watts, Tyler Terrence, the trophy is in the building, Tyler. Let's begin with this Mexican side. Tata Martino takes over his first major tournament, obviously disappointed with how the World Cup ended, especially after how they started in the group stage. But now a chance to grab one of these. A little bit of vindication for the Mexicans. Yeah, and they're going to do well to try and really shore up things in the middle of the field and their finishing, right? Because what we saw against Haiti in the semifinals was nothing that we've grown accustomed to in seeing Tata Martino's sides. Of course, 70 goals in the two years that he was with Atlanta United. He was brought in for specific reasons in the sense that they wanted to liven things up in the attacking third and be more creative, and things under the last manager didn't necessarily go that way, and that's what we saw in the World Cup in Russia. And again, it's just going to come down to finishing their opportunities. They have all the horses in the stable to be able to generate those opportunities, and it's just going to matter of are they going to punish the United States for the space that they give them. American legend Marcelo Balboa, Mexican goalkeeper Moises Munoz bringing the trophy out onto the field at Soldier Field. There is Tata Martino. And after a touchline ban for the semifinal, he is back on the sideline for this final. Meanwhile, Greg Berhalter takes over the United States. Dave Sarakin led the team throughout the 2018 calendar year after the shocking defeat in the hands of Trinidad and Tobago in October 2017. There are about a half dozen players that were on that team in 2017, about a half dozen that were in the Gold Cup in 2017. But there is a new leaf being turned over, and for the Americans, this is a big moment in their progression towards eventually trying to get back to a World Cup. This is a big moment, and for Greg Berhalter, I think the moment is almost the biggest for him, more so than it is for the Federation, because this is going to be one of the biggest measuring sticks, as you mentioned before, as far as whether or not Berhalter's system is going to be able to translate onto the international stage. It's a very specific system that he used with the Columbus crew in Major League Soccer in North America for a number of years, and he was brought in for those specific ideas. Like Tata Martino, they have very specific microscopic ideas in terms of how they want to play. Now, is he going to be able to accomplish that against the Mexico side that has proven to be the kings of this tournament, having seven titles? U.S. are chasing after number seven. But again, for Greg Berhalter, he only has a specific amount of time with these guys. They're not in camp every single day. They only get each other three, four, five maybe times a year. Are they going to be able to put all the pieces together? And again, it was a long, long wait to find Greg Berhalter for the United States Soccer Federation. It took over a year, and they got a guy who really hasn't been all that successful in Major League Soccer. He got to the playoffs more years than not, never won a championship. But again, it's his philosophies, ideas they want to implement. Tonight is a huge barometer in terms of, is this going to work, and especially work against our biggest rivals within our region? Well, you can see those big trophies are exactly what these players are after. A shocking captain choice for the United States. Young Weston McKinney, the 20 year old from Texas who plays his club ball for Schalke in the German Bundesliga. Here's the captain's armband for the United States side that has changed the captains every game in this tournament so far. Jack Steffen standing right behind him. 
Memo Ochoa at the front of the opposite line for the Mexicans. In this Gold Cup final, the third ever to be contested at Soldier Field. It's a, a game that's been sold out now for over a week. Well, they are certainly ready for this. Last time these teams met in the Gold Cup final in Chicago, a 2-1 American victory. It's the only time the Americans have defeated the Mexicans in a Gold Cup final as they take the field. It's going to be a loud chorus of Mexican cheers. It's estimated 80, 90% of this building are Mexican fans. Andres Guardado leading Mexico onto the field. Weston McKinney is opposite, 12 years apart. On this American side, largely dominant run in the Gold Cup. They have exercised some of their old ghosts. Trinidad and Tobago certainly comes to mind. And after hard fought wins against Jamaica and Curacao, here they are. For Mexico, everybody thought they would be here. They're not necessarily the story. Tata Martino says nothing's going to happen if they lose. But certainly there is an expectation that they will be champions. It's been a Gold Cup that's been marked by amazing group stage games. The Caribbean standing up loudly and proudly throughout this competition. But ultimately it ends as nearly half the Gold Cups have in its history, with these two giants meeting in the middle. It'll be as poignant as ever. Two managers leading teams into their first major tournament as a group. Here are the anthems in Chicago. Of Mexico. Damas y caballeros, les pedimos ponerse de pie para el himno nacional de México. de los Estados Unidos.
States, Mexico. Precious few number of competitive meetings between these sides in the grander scheme of the soccer atmosphere. And to sell out a stadium in downtown Chicago is a moment for celebration for both. They have arrived back to the Gold Cup final in 2019. Both semifinal heartbreak in each of the last two tournaments, Mexico in 17, the United States in 15. Toronto Martino sending out this starting lineup for Mexico. One change, Uriel Antuna steps in, Roberto Alvarado steps out. Tyler, this is a group that interchanges well among their front three. They can be dangerous in more or less any part of the field, and defensively, they've been quite stingy. They have been stingy, and Greg Berhalter has obviously the utmost amount of respect for what Tata Martino and Mexico are trying to employ. And Greg Berhalter has seen this before from Mexico and Tata Martino. Again, they're linking Major League Soccer, but for Mexico, they're similar to the United States in the sense that they will overload sides. They'll put three, sometimes four players on the right or the left-hand side, and they will just go, 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 go. Again, they generated just infinite amount of opportunities against Haiti in the semifinal, but they weren't able to finish any of them off, and it just goes back to the fact that they are going to be able to break down the United States, although only one team has scored against them, and that was in the semifinal against Jamaica. They are going to be a very difficult out tonight for the Americans. Mario Escobar of Guatemala is the referee. He was the referee for the CONCACAF League Final and the CONCACAF Champions League Semi-Final this year. It's his third game of the Gold Cup, including the quarterfinal, Jamaica and Panama. Greg Berhalter, his starting 11 is unchanged from their semi-final victory against Jamaica. Weston McKinney, the surprise pick to be the captain, and of course up front, all eyes on Josie Altidore, Jordan Morris, who scored the game-winning goal in the final in 2017 against Jamaica. So what we saw from the Americans in the semifinal against Jamaica is something different than what we saw more or less throughout the entire tournament. What we've come to know about Greg Berhalter, and it almost looks like it's a front two with Josie Altidore and Jordan Morris. And a lot of people are saying, well, why isn't Tyler Boyd starting, given how well that he's been playing for the United States, even though he's only made about three or four caps for them? Well, that's because if you are going to have running partners up there, Tyler Boyd doesn't necessarily fit that bill. Jordan Morris does, and he and Josie Altsdorf had success in that sort of system for the United States before. You notice Tyler Boyd available for the United States. Alvarado, the lone change for Mexico, is available off the bench. Fans still streaming in. It's the home to the legendary Chicago Bears of the National Football League. It's hosted the World Cup, and now a third World Cup final. are ready. They've been haunted by what occurred in 2017 and what they did experience in 2018. For Mexico, finally, rubber meets the road. A chance to win a major tournament under their new coach. Mexico, USA for the sixth time in the Gold Cup final. Underway from Chicago, Illinois. It's always been a tremendous venue for Gold Cup Finals. What lies in store tonight? Mexico and the United States underway. from Mexico. It's just very direct. Rodolfo Bizarro, who's just always making things run in the middle of the field. And the United States will do well to step because if they continue to give L3 those sorts of looks from 18, 20 yards out, and nobody's going to step to the likes of Dos Santos, Pizarro, Rodardo, who's ever coming out of the middle of the field, it's going to cause problems for stepping.
aggressive and trying to win the ball from Antuna, but just sort of making a statement saying that you're not going to have loads of time and space on the ball. And keep an eye on the middle of the field, Mike, because that's going to be the most interesting part of this matchup because both sides are going three for three. It's man to man, like for like in the middle of the park. So it's really just going to come down to who's going to win their 1v1 battles. And then overall, it's going to be about defensively who's going to stay tight when you do lose those 1v1 battles. for the Mexicans. Tata Martino was the Major League Soccer Coach of the Year, leading Atlanta United to a record-breaking season. And while many Americans certainly know him for that, he's known globally for his time at the helm of Barcelona, Argentina, and Paraguay distinguished playing career as well over the last decade plus as a manager in very high profile posts. Rodriguez. Passing Bradley. That's that pressure to see from the United States. They flow in and out of it. They're not going to go 100 miles an hour and press the back line of Mexico throughout the entire 90 minutes, but they're going to pick and choose their spots. Of course, Mexico to go a little bit more long, a little bit more direct. And the pressure on Pulisic early is a good shout as well from Tata Martino because he basically said, if we can stop Pulisic and minimize the space and chances that he has, we're going to win the game. It was as simple as that for Tata Martino, who has the utmost respect for Pulisic. American Outlaws, chanting onward. Kenny slipping ahead, Ariola. Passed it away. Gallardo, who made a long run over. Bradley, captain this side for multiple gold cups. Piazza. Rola, that was Chaka Rodriguez. Long, green, Piazza. He's been incredible. This is the only country where you can host a final on your own soil get booed for being in possession. That's what makes playing games on American soil when it comes to the international football stage so amazing and so fascinating. This, this is incredible. Natalie serving upfield. Kinney. Jordan Morris powering ahead. For Ariola. Jordan Morris cutting his side is something that we've seen a lot of. We saw even more of it from Tyler Boyd. Greg Berhalter. Berhalter had the Columbus crew in Major League Soccer from 2013 to 2018, a distinguished playing career. And yes, they did meet in the 2002 World Cup. Berhalter was playing then. Pulisic, Pulisic in behind! Little Joa is there. Chance to bike this home. What a great touch. And ricochets high over the crossbar off of Pulisic. A little bit of madness there for Mexico in the back. A little bit of madness, and they lost track of the one guy that they simply can't lose track of. You see Edson Alvarez totally loses his mark in Pulisic. It gets caught ball watching, and then it's that last touch right there before Pulisic pulls the trigger that let him down. Great ambitious effort from Altidore. We've already seen him convert that once in this tournament. But if you're Mexico, there's one guy you can't lose track of, and it's Christian Pulisic. And I'm sure that was all that Tata Martino and the technical staff were talking about in the days leading up to the final. Mariola, Rodriguez in pursuit.
job at that right back position. Greg Berhalter was really high on him. And then it was the game against Curacao in the quarterfinals. You actually hear our crowd Mike picking it up. And Berhalter was audibly very upset with the way the league was playing, so they needed to drop on the ball. When they were in possession, needed to push higher up the field when they were defending. And basically the position was given to Reggie Cannon, and he's just run with it since. Cannon just 21 years old. He was born in Chicago before ultimately moving to Texas. it over the top, Altidore, Altidore cutting back, Altidore through! He rolls it wide of the post. He's nearly an epic opening blow for the United States in the eighth minute. Well, Tim Ream is not doing this by accident. He sees the space and Josie Altidore makes a great little move, gets rid of the first defender. And against Mexico in a final, you may not get opportunities better than this. So when you get these, you have to bury them. For Josie Altidore, who's been there and done that for the United States, across Europe, any league, you name it, he's been there. He scored goals at that level. He has to finish a chance like that. Listen, trying to leap through. By Guardado. Here comes Rodriguez. Right fullback pushing forward, unimpeded. Dump toward Antuna. Antuna has to strike it on the first time. Header falls kindly to Stefan. Well, for two sides that were so sure-footed defensively, more or less throughout this entire tournament, Mexico looks completely out of sorts. We've seen the United States exposed on a number of times. And again, for Josie Altador, and this is a question coming into it because the goal he scored in that game against Panama, the final match with Group D, was the first goal he had scored for the United States in more than a year. And the question was, was he in form, in goal scoring form? And if you are going to wear that number 17, if you're going to be the number nine, as it were, for the Americans, you have to be able to put those chances in the back of the net. And it might be a chance that the United States rule. Altador struggled with his health at the outset of the year with Toronto FC, the Canadian side. Jimenez. Pizarro. Pizarro. Comes across. Matt Miazga. Deflected away. And pushed up field by Cannon. Alvarez. Put away by Bradley. Reggie Cannon certainly has his hands full over on this right side of the defense for the United States, dealing with the likes of Rodolfo Pizarro, as well as Gallardo, who is just reckless abandon, flying up and down that left flank for Mexico. So Reggie Cannon making his first Gold Cup final appearance, and he has got all sorts of work to do. a free kick for Mexico. And Mario Escobar have a chat with the American striker. It's just a bit of frustration from Josie Altador, and that's silly because Dos Santos at that point in time had already put himself in between the man and the ball and did a really good job. It was a clever first touch, and if you're Altador in the opening moments of this game, you have to be a little bit smarter than that because the next winner in the book and then everything after that. And Josie Altador, unlike most number nines, is a very, very physical, likes to go up and challenge, and it's one misswung elbow. There's your second yell, and you're out. So you have to be much more careful if you're Josie Altador. And again, I think it goes back to frustration of missing that early opportunity. We'll see how he's going to handle the rest of the match. Stefan is the goalkeeper when the Columbus crew defeated Tata Martinez Atlanta United in the MLS Cup playoffs in 2017. Flick ahead, Ariola. It's a great pass, and the, well, the, the flag is up. It's creative stuff from Josie Altidore. It's creative stuff from Josie Altidore. The movement is fluid, it's dynamic, it's creative from the United States, and Tata Martino has to be wondering what on earth is going on with my defense? And I don't think it's solely on the back four. I think that it's an Alvarez and Jonathan Dos Santos who are responsible for a bit more of the defensive work for Mexico in the middle of the park are not following 
vertical runners, and as a result, you're just seeing all this space open up for the United States, and that's what made them so deadly throughout this competition. Runs being made out of the midfield, whether it's Weston McKinney, Christian Pulisic, Paul Ariola. Away from Jimenez. He's one of the big talking points coming in to this tournament. Mixed bag of results for Greg Berhalter in the early going, and their friendlies. But then he brings in Christian Pulisic, other players that have been in Europe that hadn't been called in all that often in the lead up to the Gold Cup. They feel this, this month together has allowed them to progress. But even you think back to the, the last game against Jamaica before the Gold Cup, Tyler, I don't think formationally they were really clear on what they were going to do. They went with a three back in Washington, D.C. against the Reggae Boys, which was just an absolute disaster. Shamar Nicholson who actually ended up scoring the long goal against the United States and the only goal that the Americans have conceded in this competition. But you're right, they had no idea what they wanted to do. I think that Greg Berhalter was still experimenting and maybe getting a little bit of cold feet saying, is my system going to work on this international stage? Because you have to expect that in the back of his mind, he always knew that it was going to be his biggest test in Mexico, which was going to put his system to the test. But everything's been working out extremely well. He's made adjustments tactically when he's needed to, specifically against Jamaica, as that's a rough challenge for Matt Miazga and Pizarro. But really, the jury is still out on Burhalter, whether or not this theory, this idea of the ever-changing attacking third for the United States is going to prove to be fruitful on the international stage, on the biggest stage within CONCACAF right now against Mexico in a final. Go, go, go. Rodriguez, Guardado, skipping it up to Antuna, kicked away by Reem. happy to play with his feet. Not too bad with his hands either. San Memo, they uh, they brought the nickname back after that epic penalty shootout. The quarterfinal with Costa Rica. Leo come back. It is an American foul and Antuna brought down Ariola arguing his case. United States right now is doing an excellent job of when, the ball, when they win the ball back, they're going with an incredible amount of pace the other way, and that's exactly what you have to do against Mexico because they themselves, much like the United States, when they're in full possession, reckless abandon going the other way, throwing an incredible number, amount of numbers forward, and there's all sorts of space that opens up as Mexico are looking for a foul here, but not going to get any sympathy from the referee. Long. Invited Guardado all the way. has been having, whether it be with Tigres or with Mexico, getting to another final. He wins the Clasor of Liga next, got to a Scotiabank CONCACAF Champions League final against their bitter rivals in Monterrey, fell short, but looking at yet another trophy to his, his mantle at home. You mentioned Chaka Rodriguez. He's got a little patch there on the back of his head. He picked up a mighty knock in the semifinal against Haiti ended up having to finish the game with what looked like a swim cap on his head. Of course, it had the wrong sponsor, which uh, is a different problem. Also, the problem was on social media that everybody was concerned with the sponsor rather than if Chaka Rodriguez was okay or not. Indeed. Pizarro looking for Antuna. Guardado sliding in, lofts it over in the end. And this is a goal-saving challenge from Paul Ariola. Look at the tracking back here from number seven for the United States. Not his position by any stretch of the imagination, but knows that that's where the space is and that's where he's needed. And throws off Guardado just enough. He doesn't even get a touch to it, but does enough to throw Guardado off of his game in the penalty area and be able to save a goal for the U.S. Cannon won't get to this. Leonardo will accept the throw. Here's Rodolfo Pizarro, is the best young player in the Champions League for Chivas Guadalajara. They won the title. 
then promptly moved on the following year and won it again. Monterey. Montador plays it back. He's grabbing at his backside. Ball lofted over the top. Alvarez has his hands full. And the slide sends Alvarez to ground. Pulisic getting stuck in. And that's going to be a great matchup to watch all night between Edson Alvarez and Christian Pulisic because Edson Alvarez, again, he's responsible for Christian Pulisic running out of the middle of the field because Jordan Morris and Josie Altidore are both occupying the center backs for Mexico. So that means that the direct runs, the vertical runs as they are, are going to have to be tracked by the likes of Edson Alvarez, Jonathan Dos Santos. And Pulisic has Alvarez beat for pace, but obviously Alvarez is a bit more physical. So it's just going to be a matter of who gets to the ball first. You saw Pulisic trying to knock him off the ball. Guardado's going to get a little stern talking to here, but... You know, you have Edson Alvarez, Club America, 21 years old. You have Christian Pulisic, 20 years old, heading over to Chelsea for the small fee of $73 million. I mean, this is exactly what you want in a matchup in the middle of the park. And Pulisic will join Chelsea in a couple days' time after leaving Borussia Dortmund. And Miazga will also join at Chelsea the tournament the center back with his role far less defined long here's Aaron Long what a story coming out of the USL championship he was caught by Portland Timbers went to Red Bulls too and moved the center back Guardado chasing after Stefan all of a sudden after one year as the American second division defender of the year. Moves up to Red Bulls. Has really found his place in the American national team as much as he has for Red Bulls. How much of a delicacy is the left-footed left center back becoming in the modern game to be able to play out of the back? And one of our colleagues, Chris Nurse, who actually used to play for the Guyana national team, said that the game is almost unrecognizable at this point because your goalkeepers have to have the feet of central defenders, the central defenders have to have the feet of central midfielders, and so on and so forth. And Aaron Long has really made himself invaluable to this United States national team from the sense that he A, can distribute, he B, can defend, and he has a little bit of pace and he has lots of strength. So he's become, he's just become invaluable and to think that he's got to this point and not really being touted that much coming out of college in the American system is truly incredible. Ariola found Bradley. Bradley lifting the cross. Knocks back along toward Altador. Alvarez is there. Cannon will trot over to the side, watch this pound off the flag and lead to a USA corner. That is a carbon copy of the opening goal for the United States against Jamaica. Long ball from Bradley, finding Reggie Kanan, takes it on the first time, trying to find Altidore. The only thing missing was the late run from Weston McKinney. There's Christian Pulisic. Five goals in the hexagonal, three goals in the Gold Cup. Coming into this tournament. All lined across, pounding down away from McKinney. And can Dos Santos lead the charge the other way from Mexico? And a push by Ream, free kick Mexico. The Santos being a little aggressive trying to get the ball back from McKinney. I don't know if that foul there from Tim Ream is 100% necessary. You have the opposition taking a touch negative towards their own goal. Let it go. You even might be able to win the ball back in that position and hit Mexico on the counter going the other way. Hopped in, Gallardo. Raul. Kinney. Another Pulisic. Weston McKinney has been almost non-existent in this opening 20 minutes. I mean, how often have we called his name with the exception of defensive responsibilities? And talking about the captain's armband. Found out to Rodriguez. That's the cross along. Bradley. First to the pressure, and the foul from Alvarez at the back of that sturdy striker, Josie Altidore. And as much flack as Michael Bradley is going to catch, specifically from United States fans, that is world-class from him in his own penalty area, takes a touch, finds the feet of his number nine, he gets fouled, and the Americans can take a breath and move up and out. Is there any more chronically underappreciated player among American fans? 
than Michael Bradley? No, the answer is no. But given his performance in the 2014 World Cup, it was, it was rightfully so. In that moment, all of the criticism he was receiving was 100% warranted. Everything after that, I'm not 100% sure, as now things are starting to get a little heated and you wouldn't expect anything else. No, precisely what is uh, to be anticipated. Rodriguez and Altidore face to face. Alvarez going into Pulisic, and then Rodriguez knocks it off of Pulisic. And I love that from Josie Altidore coming to the aid of his young up-and-coming buddy. I mean, he's not even up-and-coming anymore. He's heading over to Chelsea. He's the best player on the United States national team at 20 years old. But I, you have to love that from Josie Altidore. You love the physicality from Edson Alvarez. Again, that's going to be the matchup that we keep an eye on this entire night. And Alvarez, if he can throw Pulisic off of his game by any means necessary, and that includes being a little bit physical with him. The 73rd meeting between Mexico and the United States. The last match of friendly in Nashville last year. 1-0 America to win with Tyler Adams, who is unavailable for this tournament, scoring the lone goal. Mexico in total has won 38 of the 72 matches. Now Ariola and Rodriguez pushing and shoving. Initial challenge from Ariola and then just grabs him on the shoulder, and then Ariola sort of stopped right in front of Chaka Rodriguez and just let him know that he was going to be there, not only in that moment, but throughout the rest of the night. Here's a tone's That's set. Bizarre. That's the overload that we were talking about. Gallardo's now working over the middle of the field. Pizarro's still on the far side, and now you're going to get Chaka Rodriguez into the mix over here. A lot of numbers for Mexico forward. Gallardo. Gallardo. Pizarro blows down. Gallardo. Gallardo, chance for service. Just in front of Pizarro. That's by far the best spell that we've seen from back to front from Tata Martino's group tonight. Number of passes, probably over a dozen, getting service, whipped into the box, kept it low. It was a good idea, but Weston McKinney was stationed perfectly right where he's supposed to be. sure-footed and they keep the ball, then it opens up a world of opportunities. But if they give away like they did this year, Mexico wants to go the other way very quickly. Defensive transition with Greg Burholder's number one comment. Mexico unwell in this tournament. Pulisic. Sweep it further. Jimenez, Pizarro, Rondo Santos. He can shoot from here. Stan Antuna driving across. Pizarro! That'll deflect away and come to Reim. up comes down finally for Pulisic. Plays on to Jordan Morris. Altidore Ariola in the box, but it's Pulisic bringing it down, trying to turn. Antuna lost it to Reem. All the way back to Stefan. And that's Christian Pulisic just on a different level than everybody else on the field because everybody 
including you and I, were thinking that he was just going to play negative or play it square in the middle of the park, but he waits for the defender to get sucked in, clips it over for Jordan Morris. Played down to Pulisic. Mariola. Mariola has to move negatively. Green. Bradley. Santos, Dos Santos. Signal reloads. Gallardo, Gallardo keeping still. Stefan carries it aside, but a handball beforehand. It's good defending again for the United States. They're forcing Mexico to try to break them down. And again, the Americans have been very good defensively throughout this entire tournament. You can just see Reggie Cannon gets a foot to it, and it pops up right on Gallardo. But Again, a good job for the United States of just forcing Mexico to break them down. And Mexico is asking the same thing of the Americans on the other end. You saw just a few moments ago how Tata Martinez happened to let Aaron Long and Matt Miazga have the ball because his main concern of the United States beating him was more so with their pace and an open space. And if you could reduce that and force the United States to string a lot of passes together, play with the ball in their own defensive third, you might be able to hit them the other way. Well, these coaches might be worlds apart in terms of their experience and their resumes. Their styles and their approaches to the game are very, very similar. Well, that worked out. There were ways in which that would not have worked out. Pizarro. And Tuna. Moving onward. Such an impressive start to this tournament, albeit against Cuba, the opener in Pasadena for Mexico. As it cooled off a bit since then, was actually on the bench. Puerto Alvarado got the call to start the semifinal. But it didn't necessarily matter who was against, who it was against because when you look at this Mexico team, yes, there are a lot of big names missing, Carlos Vero, Chicharito. But to be able to get a young kid like Julio Antuna on the score sheet and feeling good about himself early on in the tournament, then it leads to moments like the opening goal against Martinique to firm up the group, and so on and so forth. So just getting that confidence underneath his belt was huge. Pulisic running by Alvarez, slipping Morris ahead. It has to be out from underneath his feet from Jordan Morris. If it is, he can set himself up. He might get fouled, but a poor touch like that and it forces them to do what you're seeing right now, which is completely slow things up and allow Mexico to get 10 men back behind the ball. Scored that wonder goal, the Azteca. World Cup qualifying. Bouncing down and headed away, Ariola. Ariola on the turn! Rolls wide. Just a little blase from Mexico. Mariola with a big smirk on his face. Well, that's like what we like to call a tweener. Should I stay? Should I go? Is Ochoa coming to get it? Is Salcedo coming to get it? No, nope. Ariola cleans it up, and that's his only option in that moment. With Ochoa off his line, you have to pull the trigger. You would like to be a little bit cleaner in the attacking third in an instance like that, but great awareness from Ariola to just keep following the play up. Tuna tried to follow and then as his run, neither called the ball into the wing. Back to, your, back to your point, sorry about that, about the World Cup qualifying. That was the most bizarre part about the United States failing to qualify for Russia was that they started off with the thrashing of Trinidad and Tobago. They go to the Azteca, a place where they historically usually come out with nothing, more so than their souls ripped out from them. And they end up getting a point 
in a massive game against a very good Mexico team, and then just all the wheels fall off. They thought they had the, the qualification wrapped up, but a World Cup qualification is something that is earned. It is never given. They learned that the hard way. They are to off this over. The loss in Harrison, New Jersey to Costa Rica. The loss at Trinidad and Tobago, obviously the one that sticks most in everybody's craw, and with good reason. Wild confluence of events that saw the USA miss out on the World Cup in 2018. Characteristic of this United States defense that we have all come to know and love throughout this entire tournament, only having conceded one goal coming into this final. Nobody wanted to claim it. Ended up being your winger, your second furthest man up the field in Jordan Morris, who finally says, Guys, don't worry, I got it. I'll save us from a total catastrophe along the back line. very much their style. Overloaded sides, with numerical advantages in different areas of the park. Of course, the likes of Reggie Cannon's in range to just have to solve a multitude of problems and to link up with their defenders in the sense that their midfielders who are having to drop back and act as a third, fourth, fifth defender in those types of situations just because Mexico are throwing six or seven at you on a side. typically has. They're almost switched places. We just almost want Alvarez to be in a position to be able to switch the point of attack. Pizarro, Green. energy in 
the first half hour or so trying to get that go-ahead goal. They should have had one in the form of Josie Altador. And you start to see a little bit of fatigue set in. It's a hit to this. Kareem's wide. Just a ball in from Gordado and Antuna just sort of arriving late, coming right in front of Aaron Long. This far played a beautiful game tonight. Cannon charging forward. Knocks it out wide. Morris. It's on the top of Altidore, Salcedo. Rodriguez. Away from the Mendes. Burhalter wants to play. If you think about just that last attack for the U.S., you see runners crisscrossing on their way through and trying to make themselves available for that end product. If you're Greg Berhalter, you have to ask more out of both Reggie Cannon and Jordan Morris. For Reggie Cannon, if you see those runs being made and neither one of the center backs is going to step to Reggie Cannon, have a go. Just let it fly. Testo Choa, see what he's got tonight. He usually has his best stuff in these types of moments, but just make sure that he's not sleeping back there. And then for Jordan Morris, once the ball makes its way out to you, that ball has to be low, it has to be driven, and it has to be on point because any sort of deflection, they can end up in the back of the net. Moreno expressed an interest in playing in the U.S. He's been linked to the Beckham's team into Miami. Goes down. Antuna. Beckham. I think there are a lot of players that wouldn't mind playing for Inter Miami. Suarez, Griezmann, I don't know about all that just yet. Victor Moreno, 31 years old, that's probably a good fit maker in soccer. Covered by McKinney, slipping through Ariola. Picked here by Pulisic. Pulisic for Ariola. That continues, and it's a bicycle away. Sato got up to meet it. Pressure continues. I'm not really sure how that wasn't brought back, and a foul off the look is good. He took a serious knock right after he gave the ball away. He thought that it was going to be pulled back, but there was no indication from the referee that he was playing advantage. Turnover from McKinney. And then saying that went off of uh, off his pack. has done a good job tonight so far. There's obviously so many emotions that are running high. Not only is it a final, but it's the most bitter rivalry in all of CONCACAF between the United States and Mexico. I'll take it a step further. Probably one of the best international rivalries on the world football stage, regardless of region. And he's done an excellent job of sort of taming emotions. We've had a couple of instances. This could be a real howler here. Not uh, too long, Antuna. Wicked skip on that, Antuna. Hundred years old. Alvarez, Gallardo, Pizarro, maintaining through the push of Cannon. Who else can get so condensed back? And Mexico's in possession. Pizarro. Lining up Cannon again. Pizarro looking for Jimenez. They can, and that's what we saw in the 2014 World Cup in the round of 16 against Belgium, where they're forced into these shells. But they're one of the most difficult teams in the world to break down when they do get into those shells, although we've seen some nervy moments in the backs of the likes of Aaron Long and Matt Miazga. Switch for Rodriguez. Backs it to the near post. One kick for Jimenez. High boot intended by Altidore. And breaking through, Christian Pulisic. Pumps the brakes. Pulisic. 
all the way to Ochoa by way of Moreno. How big of a weapon is that if you're Greg Berhalter to be have a ball carrier like that who can literally break a press and be a one-man counterattack the other way? Forget the fact of whether or not you got an end product, which you didn't, and I'm sure Greg Berhalter will have a word with Pulisic about that, but just to be able to give the United States an opportunity to push forward, it's incredible. Dos Santos! A winding effort that nearly snuck inside and gave Mexico a lead. Again, it's Dos Santos from distance, and it's the same exact spot that we saw the first shot of the night come from Mexico, and it was this Dos Santos as well. And again, if you're the United States and you see a center midfielder, the quality of Jonathan Dos Santos, who plays for LA Galaxy, and a guy that plenty of the United States defenders are familiar with, step to the ball, you know what he's capable of. Sold out Soldier Field in Chicago, nearing halftime. Scoreless affair in this Gold Cup final in 2019. Played ahead, Ariola. Salcedo got it away, but Pulisic recovers. Pulisic trying to lob to the back post, and Ochoa is able to step back and make a clean catch. Shades of Cliff Dempsey with his days at Fulham. I mean, he just sees Ochoa off of his line, fading to his right. Tries to go for the chip to the far post, but Ochoa not to be fooled by the young American. Score that in a game like this, you're a legend forever, aren't you? Just among American circles. Pulisic might be one anyways when it's all said and done. Crazy to think about, you're talking in terms of legends, and the kid's not even 21 yet. Might be a, a little strong and a little early. I'm surprised we don't have a goal yet. Very surprised. I, you can make the argument the United States have had the better of the opportunities. Josie Altidore is, is one the caliber of the caliber of striker that he's at. You have to finish that. And for Mexico, you can make the argument that Guardado should have one as well. Rodriguez lifting the cross, steered away. Long goes to ground. It's well done from Aaron Long. Taking the ball by the horns. It's a ball that's lofted in and it can cause problems. It looks innocuous when it's first hit. But with the level of strikers that Mexico has going forward with Pizarro and how good Raul Jimenez has proven to be with his head as we talked about in the Premier League with Wolves, that's something that can be snapped on target. It can step with a lot of injuries. Pizarro looks like he has a serious arm injury. He's gesturing here. Sort of gets hooked from behind. Oh, goodness. No way Pizarro finishes this game. And once you see that limp hand, and you saw it at home as well, there's no need to really describe it any further. It's about as blatantly obvious as it'll come. And for a guy that has been just on the top of his game for more than two years now and is still so ridiculously young at 25 years of age, if he is to exit, which almost seems inedible at this point, it's a really tough blow and a substitution that Tata Martino certainly didn't want to have to make at halftime. Pizarro has said his goal still go to Europe. But he's had a phenomenal run. Through Pachuca, onto Chivas, eventually Monterey. Multiple Champions League titles. And well, right now, he's, he's trying to move this around in a way where he might try and continue on. But that looked like a gnarly injury. And Benin Pineda is waiting to come on. I would be shocked if he continues. I think everybody in the stadium would be shocked. And let's say this, he is exciting, and at times when he plays at his best, he seems almost like an extravagance on a good team and that he can take anybody one-on-one -on -one and win you a game on his lonesome. 
Pizarro is one of the singular most exciting players in the region. And he does it in a way that you wouldn't really pick up on it in just watching him for a few minutes. It's something that you need to see over time because he's always in control. He's not running at you with blazing speed. The ball is never more than a foot, a foot and a half away from his own feet. I mean, he really is incredible in the way that he goes about things. And he's just a footballer that you look at him and say, that's what it's supposed to look like at this level. And, and for Rodolfo Pizarro, I mean, what a brutal way to sort of exit this competition. And a competition that while you might not be on the score sheet week in and week out, it's the same thing when he's playing club, whether it's with Chivas or Monterrey. Again, he's not scoring boatloads of goals. He's just a guy that you can't afford to lose. Green, Ariola. Well, obviously, stoppage time will go beyond the allotted minute. That's as far as we'll get. Well, it's unclear. Mazzaro is still boostering with that arm. And it's unclear if his day is done. Altidore, probably the best chance for the Americans in this first half. Tyler, your thoughts on the overall 45? First 20, 25 minutes, fit for a final. Great tempo, great pace, open. You had chances on both ends. Josie Altidore again, and I've said it once, I've said it twice, I'll say it 17 more times. He has to finish that opportunity. If they are going to be successful, it's going to be through that man, number 10, Christian Pulisic. Every single time he's touched the ball in the attacking third, Mexico has to at least send two to be able to deal with the problem. And if you're Greg Berhalter, there's a few things you want to tweak. But again, for the United States and a team that missed out on the World Cup, you're nil-nil with Mexico at halftime of a Gold Cup final. You're perfectly OK with this scenario right now. If you're Mexico and Tata Martino, you have higher expectations for your group, even if you're missing some of your bigger names, the likes of Eric Gutierrez, who was on the roster, but is not here due to injury. You have Miguel Ayun, who was left off for health issues. You have Chicharito, you have Carlos Vela, who aren't here. You still, there's still a higher expectation. You are the kings of CONCACAF. You're expected not only to be in the final, you're expected to win the final. They're not playing like it right now. Gold Cup Final 2019, Mexico and the United States. And it is an American side that did have some chances in the opening half. Christian Pulisic had a, really every time he touched the ball, a decent opportunity to make something of it. Altidore trying to fly home a bicycle kick. Pulisic continuing to pressure. And the resulting carom goes over the crossbar. He beats Salcedo one on one. The header back in by Ariola. If Fountador cycles that home, it's spectacular. Instead, he misfires, still scoreless. Fountador breaking through this opening 20 minutes, rolling it just wide the post. An excellent ball launched over the top and a nice touch around Moreno. In the end, the Americans unable to get a goal out of those two really solid efforts in the opening half an hour. Mexico grew into this game as it went along. There was a handball whistle to here, cut up against the arm of Gallardo. The resulting shot was saved one way or the other. It's Cannon he nearly lost the challenge and allowed Gallardo through. Nervy moment for Memo Cho, as good as he's been in this tournament. Paul Ariola launches this just skitter wide. Goalkeeper's out. This is as good a chance as you're going to get. So he lets fly. Whether he puts this on target or not, 
may not end up in the net with Salcedo covering a lot of ground to get behind. Dos Santos with a crack in the final 10 minutes of the opening half, flies it wide of Stefan, and with 45 minutes in the books, the sixth final between the USA and Mexico is scoreless. Here are the halftime statistics. Mexico a slight advantage in possession, and they certainly finish with some more shots in that opening half. But all in all, it is level in this sixth all-time final between Mexico and the United States. 45 minutes in the books, nil-nil. United States men's national team makes their way back down the tunnel. It is a stadium packed with Mexican faithful tonight. Gold Cup 2019. Bulisic and company have been unable to break through the Mexicans so far as they look to win for the third time in seven meetings in the Gold Cup against their fiercest rival to the south. Tyler Terrence, Mike Watts. Tyler, that first half for both sides it was largely pretty fluid. Both teams had a couple opportunities to find the opening goal. All in all, it's been a pretty solid final to this point. So now what? Well, now what is, is what you and I were talking about is that you would probably give the edge to Tata Martino in comparison to Greg Berhalter in terms of making halftime adjustments. And that's not a knock against Greg Berhalter. It's just the fact that Tata Martino has the names of Barcelona and Argentina on his resume, and Greg Berhalter does not. So what is Mexico going to do differently in the second half? I don't know if there's all that much you can do. If you're Tata Martino, you have to lay into Edson Alvarez in the middle of the field for Mexico because Christian Pulisic had free reign. And you see what he's capable of when he has time and space on the ball. And even when he doesn't have time and space on the ball, he still finds ways to get out of trouble. Meanwhile, on the other side for the United States, I, I think that after the first half, you can give the edge to the Americans because I think that they played a very, very good first half of football and they gave Mexico a lot of problems to solve. And they probably created the best chance of the night. But the thing is, is that we probably at this point can confidently say that Mexico's ceiling is higher than the United States. So if Tata Martino can execute those tactical changes correctly, or if the players can execute them correctly, then you're going to see Mexico perhaps prevail in the second half or create more chances in the second half. But I think that going into the second 45 minutes, it's just a matter of whether or not El Tri can figure out what the United States is throwing at them, which is a lot of Christian Pulisic, which is Josie Altador checking back to the ball. And again, Reggie Cannon just darting forward on that right-hand side. The right-hand side is entirely where all of the action goes through for the U.S. Secondary option is the left side, but that's where they end up finding most of their chances anyways on the left-hand side. So a lot to sort of pick out in the first five to ten minutes of the second half. Andres Guardado has been here, and he's won this tournament before handful of Mexicans on this roster who have not won it. Seven titles in the Gold Cup era, ten in total. And is the top country in CONCACAF. Raul Jimenez among those who's spoken longingly about trying to bring a Gold Cup title to his cabinet and has won so much. Looking to add CONCACAF's greatest prize. Adolfo Pizarro is trotting back onto the field, and it is anticipated he will begin this second half. You see him on the left side of your screen. What an absolute warrior. His arm bent into a, shall we call it, an unnatural position shortly before the halftime break. Neither of these coaches showing their cards too early in this second half of play. It's a sellout of over 60,000. It's the 73rd all-time meeting between the Mexicans 
and the Americans. Who reigned supreme in CONCACAF in 2019? Will it be another 45 minutes? Will we need more? Gold Cup 2019 could be in its final half of action. Match 31, Mexico and the United States from Chicago. Mexico unchanged in this second half. Pizarro dynamic is always on the left. Rodriguez getting up the right-hand side, connecting with Antuna early and often. Guardado, Gallardo. Santuna, who's on loan to LA Galaxy, MLS. Offed it up and beyond Antuna. Chester City sending him out for a bit of seasoning. And it was a Santos Laguna youth. And two players I would love to see more from in the second half, Mike, from either side. Andres Guardado and Weston McKinney. The two captains on the night, I, I think, need to play so much of a bigger role in this game. And for the third party standpoint, it would make for a better match. And for these two teams, it would make for a better match. And Weston McKinney now coming to the aid of Josie Altador. And Guardado gets an arm extended up toward the neck of McKinney. McKinney had come in from behind and lifted him. Moreno, that is, off of Altador after this challenge. Let's get this out of the way now. There is no VAR, so what the referees saw in real time is what we will see called on the field. They cannot go and, and look. Both managers have been very outspoken about the fact that they expect it to be part of the tournament moving forward. The president of CONCACAF has said that it will be Victor Montagliani. And it looks like both sides are going to get off scot-free. Forget all of that. Forget all of that just for a second. Because if you're our head referee and you see a player for no reason go two knees down on the back of Josie Altador, there has to be repercussions. There is no VAR. So you know what? You use the things that you have at your disposal, which is two assistant referees and a fourth official, one of whom had to have seen what happened. As our head referee was more concerned with their story in order with regards to Weston McKinney and Andres Guardado, somebody, somebody, that's a red card. You cannot grab somebody by the throat. How nobody has come away with any sort of disciplinary action. Now you can make the argument, yes, that that's good for the game from an 11 v 11 standpoint. But the fact that a Mexican player was not booked for either of those offenses is beyond me, beyond me. And from Guardado, of all people, the captain over 150 caps. This is, uh, this is pretty staggering in truth. By the same token, I think you could say Weston McKinney coming in from behind and, and trying to break up the pile isn't optimal either. And I think you can hear the crowd get into it. There's a uh, belief here some sort of punishment some way should have been doled out. said today could be soccer day in America. What a phenomenal day it's been. The Women's World Cup began at 10 a.m. Eastern time in Chicago. The game here began at 8 p.m. Other confederations enjoying their, their final on this day. Ame Bull with uh, the outstanding Copa America final. African Cup of Nations continuing. Altador laying it off on the left-hand side. Ball in front, searching for Morris. Mariola. And the delivery is so much better this time around from Paul Arioli. He's trying to find Jordan Morris. Just lashes it across the first time with his left foot. 
And it's very direct, it's very purposeful from the United States. And again, it starts with Josie Altidore coming back to the ball, turning, and making things happen. Here's Pulisic, the youngest playing a World Cup qualifier, the youngest captain, youngest goal in the modern history of the American national team. Pulisic, Morris, saved off the line, follow, ripped in by McKinney. Pulisic again, and we'll get a chance to craft another corner. There's an appeal for a handball, both McKinney and Altidore parking at the official. Well, first off, this is a terrific header saved off the line by Guardado, and there certainly is a case to be made of whether that, that ball was over the line. The secondary effort that comes in from Weston McKinney, we'll get a better look at it in a second, but that is a great defensive play from Andres Guardado, and it was way too quick to tell in real time whether or not that was a handball. This is cleared away, and a leading touch. Beyond Altidore. Ariola involved again. Well, here it is again. Boris elevates her a terrific header. Dos Santos just lets him go. And it, it's tough to tell because Salcedo is stationed right in front of Alvarez in that shot. But we can talk about it now. The VAR piece is an interesting one for both of these coaches because what more or less both of them are saying is that I don't know if I 100% agree with VAR, but other federations have it. The World Cup has it. Why don't we have it? That's basically what it comes down to. Ultimately, they felt it's not the technology. It's making sure that they are capable of utilizing the technology correctly. Pizarro, Pizarro cutting in front. It's through the legs of Jimenez. It needed just a bit of a nick, and it would have been in the net. Mexico loading up. Gallardo. Antuna, that service out of the reach. Rodriguez and Ariola bumping shoulders. I'll tell you what, if Josie Altador was given the chance that he had and Raul Jimenez is given this chance and neither of them score, I would have called you crazy because Raul Jimenez, no handball. And, and the funny part about that is, is that that's not a natural position for your hands to be while playing the game of football. But that's one of the few instances where the referee doesn't have to call a handball. The rule needs to be changed. It's as simple as that. Tyler Terrence high atop his soapbox. <laughs> Mike Watts alongside for this Gold Cup final. There is a rapidly increasing pulse to this game. This is typical when these teams do meet. Alvarez. Moreno. Santos. Antuna. Pizarro backing into space. Pizarro bursts away, foul from behind. Free kick, Mexico. And if you're Paul Areola, you compounded the problem because you didn't win the first challenge, you dipped your toe in. Pizarro beats you to the ball, who's more or less playing with three and a half limbs right now. And then you shove him in the back. And you commit a serious offense from 25 yards out. It has to be better than that. You have to be smarter than that in that situation. Will it be Jimenez or Guardado? For both. Legends developing, growing. Making the breakthrough against the Americans. Put El Tree in front. It'll be Guardado. Never tested Zach Steffen. And he has just not been on his game tonight. Everything that he's done has been off half a step. 
that includes this free kick as he was just always leaning back and never really got enough power on it to begin with to beat a keeper of the likes of Zach Steffen. And Paul Ariola certainly had his heart skip a beat while Guardado stepped up to that ball because that whole sequence was 110% his fault. Morris gets up, he, he lost it in the lights. Bill Santos, Pizarro, Pizarro again. Now Tuna, Gallardo overlapping. Brought down by Ariola. Zach Steffen was actually letting Paul Ariola know that he had time. I almost would have liked to see Paul Ariola, who's not a skilled defender by any stretch of the imagination, but does his job when asked upon. Chest it down for Zach Steffen, headed for Zach Steffen, and be able to have that sort of presence, that calmness of mind in the moment. And now finally the United States will be able to win a goal kick and go the other way. Ariola winning that to a goal kick. We're up 20 minutes away. Love Tijuana in San Diego. Across the border. He's going to live with his family. to the border in the United States, potentially to DC United of late. Transferred in 2017. And a kick from Rodriguez. Turned it over. Antuna now bushels of speed. Antuna. Kinney tracking back to the top of the area. Guardado cracking it over the crossbar. Great play from Antuna. It's horrid play from Weston McKinney giving it away. And then it's a good presence of mind from Antuna to find the likes of Guardado at the edge of the area. But as we already talked about, this has not been his night. The good news is you still have a little bit more than half an hour to try to rectify what's been a horrific final that goes for both captains of the United States and Mexico. Guardado and Weston McKinney have shied away from the moment. You have to think for Weston McKinney at 20 years of age was giving him the captain's armband the right thing to do after he's played two of the best games of his life for the Americans. Turned over by Bradley. Guardado. Guardado again. The Santos is looking for a leading ball. Guardado can do to quell that is apologize. But you have to like the ideas from Guardado. You didn't have a presence in the first half. You're just trying to assert yourself. Put your number 18 stamp on this game any way that you can. And even if that means taking three, four, five shots to be able to find the frame and get a little bit of rhythm, so be it. Pizarro. Pizarro himself admitted leading into the Haiti game. Ultimately, it's on us that sometimes we're a bit too confident with the same sentence went on to say that we did put seven past Cuba. Jimenez turns over his shoulder, covered by Long. And it's interesting you mentioned the excess of confidence because when Tata Martino stepped into the situation, Dos Santos, Pizarro, flicks it wide. Rodriguez, Pizarro, tight angle. Again, more good builds up play from Mexico. They're really starting to find a rhythm in the attacking third. And Pizarro, who's astoundingly still on the field after that injury right at the end of the first half, just ends up sending this one, given no other option. But back to your point, Mike, about the XX of confidence, because Tata Martino has asked, why do you think the struggles have been so apparent for Mexico over the past year or so? And mainly they were referring to the poor performance in the World Cup, even though they performed well in the group, but couldn't get out of the round of 16. He said, there's usually two problems that can emerge. One is an excess of confidence and an excess of responsibility. And I think the responsibility was put on the likes of Chucky Lozano, and they were just sort of letting him go and everybody else was watching Lozano perform in the World Cup because he was so brilliant. And the excess of confidence, now that's something that Tata Martino can't necessarily have a really good idea of how to, how to shift that other than verbal communication. 
because it comes down to the players, whether or not they think that they're the hottest thing to ever grace CONCACAF, which by the numbers they technically are. But you still have to go out there and earn it every single time. And we have seen at times from Mexico where they have looked to have a bit too much swagger. We saw that against Haiti a little bit, too nonchalant in the attacking third. But all Tata Martino can do is give them a good ton clashing and hope that it changes the next game. Moreno. Pressure converging. Ariola sliding in. Chaka Rodriguez. Ariola, who has not backed down from a challenge with Ariola this entire match. Again, those two going toe to toe, tet a tet, mano a mano. Christian rolled on. We'll check on. Morris is coming out, rolled on in the lead up to the final. Talking about the importance of controlling midfield. That's a task that's going to be given to him now. And he was not great when he came on as a substitute against Jamaica. He was a little bit slow on the ball. He seemed to be a little bit out of his depths. I don't know whether or not he wasn't in the right frame of mind when he was on the bench, but it just was not his best game, and I think he would be the first to tell you that. But now he has an opportunity in a final, and he, he again, is one of these massive number amount of players from the United States who really have never been in this type of situation before. Coming into this tournament, the Americans had 13 players who were making their Gold Cup debut. They had 11 different who were in their first competitive match for the United States, period. This is very much a changing of the guard, not only for the Mexico, but for the United States as well. And for Roldan, a great moment to sort of announce himself on this stage along with a number of his teammates. Antuna, Gallardo, let's catch up to this. Hands it off of Long. a touch right to Stefan. Again, Jimenez just a glaring miss. It wasn't a pass from Edson Alvarez. It was a shot, but it fell right to him. And how many times have we seen Jimenez bury those types of opportunities no less than six yards away from goal? Three allows play on. Edson Alvarez hands to his head. This uh, a moment ago. This is great play from Pissarro again. Everything's in slow motion for him. Picks out Alvarez. Jimenez probably just on. And Jimenez is trying to do too much with that. He swings his foot at it. All it needs to be, Mike, is just a little foot that he sticks out, keep your ankle locked, and redirect it into the back of the net. He knows that. He knows better than I do, certainly. But it's just that moment continues to get to him as it did all of L3. And now Josie Altidore is going to exit. And thanks to our crew for showing this because this is more or less what he's going to be remembered for tonight, and, and not exactly rightfully so, because he did so many other good things for the Americans. Jossie Zardes will come on, who's already scored a number of goals in this competition, lost his spot to Josie Altidore because Josie came on and did so well in the game against Panama, scored the one goal, did well against Curacao as well. But now we'll see, does the level drop? Does the level increase? Or does it stay the same when both of these coaches like to bring their substitutes on? It always should increase. It's fresh legs in a final. Nerves are running high. You've already covered a tremendous amount of kilometers throughout this contest. The level should always be rising when you're bringing fresh legs on. For Christian Roldan, he has a little bit to prove in that, in that department. Salcedo gesturing. This 
inside. Alvarez. Rodriguez. Sardis did play in Burrow Walter's system last year with Columbus Crew as the Major League Soccer Comeback Player of the Year. Headed back to Cannon. Gallardo bursts in and wins the ball back. Zardes the other way. Flies up to Bradley. It's well done from the Santos. Club 11 first touch. Gets out of trouble. Allows Mexico to retain possession. First touch is a little bit further away from their feet. They're a bit more angsty trying to get forward. Is that going to lead to a moment of individual brilliance, or is it going to lead to a mistake that perhaps falls to kindly to one of the two sides? Been on the verge of both in this game so far. And I'll tell you this, if we do get a goal during regulation these 90 minutes, everything's going to open up. If it, we go into extra time, nil-nil, it'll be a very different story. Snapped away from Jimenez. Leads the long switch. Pulisic trying to cover. Alvarez forward. Pizarro. That's Rodriguez to his right, Dos Santos to his left. In the end, all three touch the ball. Flick ahead, Dos Santos looking for Jimenez. Corner coming. Miazga to the rescue. He got the nod in the knockout rounds after Greg Berhalter feeling like it probably should have been him in that starting role as opposed to Walker Zimmerman who already had a number of starts underneath his belt and puts in a terrific challenge very similar to what we saw in Paraliola against that man in Andres Guardado. Guardado, Gallardo, right at Stefan. That is one of my all-time favorite set-piece routines ever. Lofted ball, edge of the area, you send everybody towards the goalkeeper. All sorts of space opens up and just half a rip. There's Cannon. Received his call up right around his 21st birthday. His girlfriend uh, put together a bit of a shindig for him. It became Park Gold Cup party, part 21st. Nice dance move from Greg Burhalter to get out of the way. I think some Mexico fans will view that as a nutmeg. True enough. Rightfully so. Cannon foul. Fiery back to the assistant referee. And Cannon has to let this go on the first time. Pulisic is making a run towards the corner flag. As soon as the ball comes into the feet of Reggie Cannon, he just has to touch it towards the corner flag and let the best player on the field go make a play. Tata Martino is making the case for persistent infringement on Reggie Cannon because that has been third, fourth, fifth foul of the evening. But as we get into the last 20 minutes or so, that's going to be the same for almost everybody on the field. The 14th American foul. Rodriguez. Play from Bradley. Guardado. Tuna, the turn, Jimenez, Cesaro faces up, lofts the cross over to Santos. This is great football from Mexico. Everything's clean, it's with a purpose. And this driven across. Tear him off of Areola, corner Mexico, 70 minutes in to this Gold Cup final. 
And they earned every single bit of this corner. Well over a dozen passes to get to this point. I don't think the United States touched the ball until it came off them for a corner. But Mexico really settling into a groove late on. Phil Santos being similar to the last set piece. This time, Rodriguez to ricochet back. 20 minutes to find a winner. Guardado. Guardado. And what Mexico has done in the second half really isn't all that much different from what they did in the first. The only difference is that they're sitting a little bit deeper. Edson Alvarez is coming a little bit deeper to receive the ball, and they're more patient going the other way. Zardes got it forward. Pulisic, Pulisic in the end had his momentum carrying him in the wrong direction. Wonder Boy wanders on. And as this game grows on, and if it continues to go the way that it's going in Mexico dominating possession, the space is going to open up for the United States. It shouldn't open up on a goal kick and one flick the other way from Zardes and Pulisic is in, but it is going to open up. Away. There are reports that Mexico's goalkeeper Memo Ochoa is dealing with a hamstring injury. The effect that that may have as this game moves uh, further and further along. Eventually, potentially going all the way to penalties remains to be seen. Adolfo Pizarro picked up what looked like a gnarly arm injury. He's paddled through it to uh, most everybody's abject shock. Still yet to see a substitution. The same 11 that started for Mexico. The Americans have made two changes. Zardes and Roldan trying to change the nature of what has been a growing Mexican wave. It's a good turn for Guardado to keep it in at the touchline. Salcedo. Los Santos. That ball came in with a bit too much. It does hold on. Here's Pizarro. Pizarro. Jimenez. Back heel, shot is on and in! Dos Santos, Mexico leads! Acumen. He starts and he finishes it. Well, it's Rodolfo Pizarro who makes it all happen. Finding the feet of Jimenez. Watch this little back heel. And Dos Santos doesn't need to do too much with it. Finds a way to get his body over the ball because Jimenez's back heel is a little bit off. But everything was on from Dos Santos. The LA Galaxy man just with a stroke of brilliance guides it on the underside of the crossbar. Nothing Stefan can do about it. Just the second international goal for Jonathan Dos Santos and he allows Soldier Field to rejoice and allows Tata Martino to rejoice. Potentially getting him what has been an elusive international trophy after missing out on so many finals over the years at this stage. And this wildly pro-Mexican crowd is just about 15 minutes away. How on earth does the United States respond with all the momentum on the favor of El Tri? What a goal for Del Santos. What a moment for a man who was among the last cuts in 2010. Was out of favor in 2014. Finally made it to a World Cup in 2018. And who's been around this national team for a decade without a goal. And now he's got two this calendar year. And that Mexican tidal wave now leading over 62,000 in joyous song. To Martino, this, uh, this honeymoon continues, it seems. It's unbelievable. And again, with so many names being left off this roster, if they're still able to pull this off, it truly would be incredible. But for the United States, with how raucous this crowd has been throughout the entire game and how it's been dialed up a notch, somebody 
has to grab everybody, metaphorically speaking, by the scruff of the neck and just say, calm down, we have plenty of time, let's go find an equalizer and go take care of business. Because right now, it seems all out of sorts, but looking good the other way. Bradley looking for Cannon. Corner, U.S. And they're going to turn to their captain. They're going to turn to the 20-year-old who just sort of has been announced to the United States national team over the past 18 months or so. They're going to turn to the likes of this man. They have to be able to generate one or two more chances and at least give themselves the opportunity to challenge Memo Ochoa, who has not seen much action at all tonight. Pulisic sneaks all the way through. The Santos head on a swivel. We lead this up the other way. And Tuna in pursuit, Stefan. Great pressure from Roldan, and that's exactly what Greg Berhalter's sign is going to need if they are going to find this level and goal. The substitutes have to be Warriors, and it just has to be nonstop. Everybody on Mexico has played 76 minutes. There's two guys out there for the United States right now that are incredibly fresh. They have to be the difference maker. with Mexico in these final 13 minutes is silly, unforced errors at the back and gifting the Americans a chance to go at you with pace and numbers down as well. Pulisic. Header is off. Effort from Matt Miazga. Alvarez. He took a forearm in the back in the process. Grabbing onto his hamstring or left leg of the sword, but Alvarez, who was a little bit shaky in the first half, has really performed well in the second. But if you're Matt Miazga, you have a good angle on this header. Oh, it has to be better than that. It has to at least be on frame and challenge Ochoa. That has to be the story. They have not challenged Ochoa at all tonight. The best chance of the night outside of Josie Altidore, Jordan Morris's header and beat Ochoa to be fair, but Guardado was right where he's supposed to be on the goal line and cleared it off. Bradley won the ball back. It's his 150th tap tonight for the United States. It's the third most of any player in West Bend's national team history. Ochoa snatched this up. His gloves are looking pretty golden right now. They look too clean. Better one by Miazga, but maintained by Mexico. Comes to Zardes. Is there an American equalizer here in the offing? Roldan fighting against Gallardo. That's taking really, a corner from that. That's really well done from Christian Roldan. And we talked about how he needed to be one of the influencers and one of the difference makers for the United States since coming on. He's been exactly that. But if they're the U.S., set pieces have been your bread and butter for years. you got to make good on one. Pulisic. Pizarro. For Bradley. Yeah. 
this an eighth title the Gold Cup for Mexico. It's a punch. Mochoa, brilliantly done. Guardado to play it ahead, but through the legs of Jimenez. Up by Dos Santos. Guardado kicked from behind. And Christian Pulisic is furious right now with Matt Miaska, and he has every right to be. That ball comes out of pressure. It finds the feet of Matt Miaska. Christian Pulisic is sitting wide open in the middle of the field, but Miaska decides to go back into pressure where the ball came from. Get it out. That's elementary. That's something you learn when you're 10, 11, 12 years old. When you see the ball come from pressure, play it out of pressure and go the other way where the space is. Rodolfo Pizarro, what can you say? He's wearing a... Uh, bandage of some sort or compression sleeve on that left arm. He picked up what appeared to be a nasty knock. His arm bending in a fully unnatural manner and managed to gut out another 35 minutes of this second half. Replaced by Carlos Rodriguez. And Pizarro again. He won't get a credit on the assist, on the goal. He is the king of the hockey assist. He is king of the pass that leads to the goal. Not necessarily the assist itself, but Rodolfo Pizarro, a warrior, mentally, physically, technically, tactically, whatever you want to call it, he is going to be vitally crucial to the success of El Tri for years to come. Foul from Reem. Jimenez's presence in this game really wasn't felt until around the 60th minute or so when he's gotten the chance now not necessarily again from a shooting standpoint but to distribute he set up the Jonathan Dos Santos goal which right now is going to give Mexico their eighth gold cup he's done well he's finding different ways to be successful in this game and that's what the greats do Mike when they aren't able to go to their bread and butter they will go outside of their comfort zone and figure out a way to help their team win Guardado and Dos Santos behind the ball. Dos Santos, the goal in the 73rd minute, has provided the separation. Dos Santos, and then further by Raul. Goal kick for the United States. Daniel Lovitz, less than a dozen caps, placing Tim Ream. And this will be a head scratcher to some, I imagine. Well, I don't mind the shout of bringing on an outside back because that right back position is so crucial in Greg Berhalter's system. But why on earth you're bringing off Tim Ream and putting Lovitz at the left back position? That I don't understand. Now you're going to throw more numbers forward. I get it. And you want your outside back to be able to get involved in the attack. But I, I don't get that one. If anything, bring him on for Reggie Cannon, who hasn't had a great game. And he's been working incredibly hard on his right flank. That's who you bring off. You don't bring off Tim Reed. Guardado. Foul here. Gold Cup that began through qualifying. The six teams from the final round of World Cup qualifying were automatically ushered into this expanded tournament. Four groups for the first time, 16 teams. The top 10 teams in Nation League qualifying on their way into this tournament as well. And a bunch of those teams had memorable moments. Bermuda, Martinique, Haiti. Curacao. In the end, it's the two heavyweights battled this out. Mexico has dominated the second half. They have a goal to show for it. Downtown Chicago. Mexican fans have been all throughout this city. they've arrived at the stadium. Highly partisan crowd on this night. The Americans trying to stun them now. The dribble continues, and a foul. 
Now goes Pulisic. Free kick for the United States. Pulisic grabbing at his right shoulder. Pulisic is just another menacing run that just completely unlocks the Mexico defense, unlocks the midfield. They have to get him on the ball more. They have to. He was so dangerous in the first half. He floated out in the second. Pulisic. Was steered wide. Miazga, player who rose to meet it. He's picked up a bit of a knock. Goal kick, Mexico, five minutes plus stoppage to another crown. Here's another look at the goal, and again, it's just, it's so well done from Dos Santos. And he knows he's not a prolific goal scorer. You can tell by his reaction. I mean, this is a guy who barely scores goals in training, let alone in a Gold Cup final. Here's Roberto Alvarado. Second Mexican substitute, and Tuna comes off. Up goes a 21-year-old, in comes a 20-year-old who just debuted with the national team last year. He's had a rather lackluster performance in this Gold Cup so far, but brought on more so in these last four or five minutes to just put pressure on the U.S. when they have the ball. Stabbed ahead, Sardis knocks it along and lifted away. It was uh, between Pulisic and Sardis, corner, U.S. And you just get the feeling whenever the United States get a corner now, it's almost written off as an opportunity that is a half opportunity, that they don't really look threatening from score. Go up, win a header, knock it back across, make something happen. Pulisic. Saddle, Choa got knocked into the net. Play continues. Bradley, Bradley crossing, ball loose in front. Chance now rolled on, and Ochoa is there to stop it. Ochoa coming up massive now. Lifted up, headed through, picked up by Ochoa. That's more like it for the United States in these types of situations. Initial ball won by Jimenez, and then watch Paul Ariola surveying, surveying, delayed run from Bradley, beautiful, keeps this cross low, forces the save out of Ochoa, and it's a great hit from Roldan, and it's off the back of the head of Hector Moreno. It's Diego Reyes coming on. Guardado comes off, third and final change for Mexico. And again, while Guardado didn't have his best night's work or his best stuff in his locker tonight, still was able to do some things in the middle of the field that allowed Mexico to move forward, drew some attention to create the space for Pizarro, to create the space for Antuna, for Jonathan Dos Santos, and a big embrace from the gaffer. 2,493 the official attendance. It's a Gold Cup record for the venue. Soldier Field in Chicago, Illinois. Free kick, won by Raul Jimenez. Mexico are just being game managers and taking their time. They've won this trophy a few times, seven to be exact, going on eight. They know exactly what it takes, especially at the end of a game, to protect a one-goal lead. That's a man who's never won it. He is on the verge. Edson Alvarez pumping his arms up at the crowd. has gone in this tournament. It's felt like they were indeed playing at home. Pasadena to 
Denver to Charlotte along the way in their group stage. The first time they went a perfect three wins in three games in the group stage since 2011. Lost by Bradley. That one mistake too many for the Americans. Jimenez. Rodriguez. One at corner for Mexico. Three out of minutes. Can't be shooting yourself in the foot this late on if you're America. You need the ball. You need to create chances. That can't happen if the opposition is taking a corner on the other end. Michael Bradley is supposed to be your shoot for the player in the middle of the field. Just a poor giveaway. We've seen him a couple times tonight, not on the same page with some of his comrades. Los Santos headed wide by Reyes. And time is running short for the United States. These Mexican fans, they can sense it. Lifted up towards Artis. Out back toward Ariola. Knocked away by Chaka Rodriguez and Salcedo. Simple play out of pressure over to the touchline. Pulisic. Pulisic crossing. That's steered away. Oh, Miazga, the center back, moving further forward. Names nine minutes. McKinney. Captain's armband at such a young age and such a big occasion. McKinney throws. Carlos Rodriguez, the clearance. Everybody's got to go now for the United States. Aaron Long even needs to go. Michael Bradley should be the only one that's back right now. Bradley. Ball falls through, contact in the penalty area. Kept alive through the legs of Ariola. Rodriguez. No referee's going to blow his whistle on those. Play back toward Pulisic. Pulisic swatting back at the referee. With Mexico now. Santa Martino had a medallion draped around his neck between his first lips against Costa Rica and penalties. It's given to him by his mother. His first chance to leave Mexico in a gold cup. 20 seconds or so away from number eight. Contact there. Referee says play on. Lob back. Played ahead. There's a handball there, too. Mexico wants this to be done. It's the full-time whistle, number eight for Mexico. 2019 Gold Cup champions. on top of CONCACAF, Jonathan Dos Santos with the Golazo in the 73rd minute. And Tata Martino remains unbeaten, almost unblemished, as Mexico's manager, the United States in their first try to regain some international respect after their shocking exit from World Cup qualifying end up on the short end against the Mexican rival that so often has had their number. And 62,500 packed into Soldier Field to watch Mexico crown CONCACAF champions again. Over to 
overhead of uh, Soldier Field in Chicago. And this highly partisan Mexican crowd will stay in their seats right up until the trophy is handed with the trophy in the lead up to this game. Jonathan Dos Santos has a goal you'll remember forever. The referees will receive their prize. Three games that uh, this referee was at the helm in this tournament. Mateo Escobar of Guatemala. For the second time, he oversees a final for CONCACAF. 2018-2019 run. Prizes uh, will begin to be handed out here. <laughs> Emma Ochoa. You can see the, the limp in his step. He truly did give everything in this tournament, didn't he? An incredible performance from the man. Club future is undetermined. The Golden Glove winner. And he really didn't have to make any saves tonight. But I'll tell you one save that was impressive. Oh, the one against Costa Rica and Keisha Fuller now to send him into the next the round. Now it's time for the Scotiabank 2019 Concacaf Gold Cup Fair Play Trophy to be awarded. Always, this award always, for always the, the top of the game. The spirit of fair play goes to the United States of America. United States win the Fair Play Award, and their young captain, Weston McKinney, walk up. There was talk about a variety of leadership being a good thing for this team. Different captains throughout the tournament, a rotating captaincy. Bradley, Stefan, Gonzalez, Pulisic. McKinney looking for a leader that this can carry them through this cycle. This CONCACAF Gold Cup showcased many great players to the world. CONCACAF will now award the best young talent in our region. The 2019 Gold Cup Scotiabank Young Player Award goes to Christian Pulisic from the United States of America. Young Player Award Christian Pulisic, as if there was any doubt. I mean, I would assume that he's also up for best player of the tournament, even though his side didn't win, but he was the best player on the field tonight. When he had the ball at his feet, nobody could stop him. Even when Mexico would send two, three, four defenders out of him, he would find a way out. We now the future is so bright the for the United States, the they just kind of link up a couple pieces Kaka together. Kaka Gold Cup Golden Boot, which is awarded to Jonathan David from Canada. Jonathan David of Canada wins the Golden Boot despite being dispatched. We now honor the best player of the long, tournament long ago. to receive the Scotiabank Golden Ball Award from Mexico, Raul De Oro, the Golden Ball at the Gold Cup, a man who has long sought this trophy. A remarkable performance from Raul Jimenez. He is the Golden Ball winner. I think about his background, Atletico Madrid, Benfica, Wolves. I mean, this guy plays at the highest level overseas and finally reaping the individual awards for his great efforts and like we talked about the best find a way to get it done even when they don't bring their finishing boots and that's what Jimenez did tonight setting up Jonathan Dos Santos in what world did we think we were going to be saying that tonight fair enough now the only trophy he'll hoist now we honor the best teams of the tournament please congratulate the runners up to the 2019 Gold Cup the United States of up medals for the United States. They fall short of defending their title in 2017. Mar Gonzalez shaking hands with many who he shared a field with in League MX. And uh, well, 
for the United States, Tyler, that there's a, an interesting dichotomy. There's a lot of talk about the project and the future, but without doubt they wanted to kickstart it in this Gold Cup, and they do fall short against a superior side. They do fall short, and here's the saving grace, is that they don't have to wait for World Cup qualification or the World Cup or the next Gold Cup, whatever it might be, to get their next crack at a competitive competition. Go wins Nations League. That's what it's there for. Not, not only for the so smaller countries who are trying to get better for the likes of Bermuda and, and, and Cuba and Haiti and countries that we're already seeing develop right before our very eyes in Curacao, but for a country like the United States who want more competitive games and want the opportunity to maybe get Tyler Boyd on the field in a semifinal or a final, go in Nations League. That's how you can kickstart it before heading into World Cup qualifiers. Again, nothing to hang your head about, but this is, this is a great reintroduction to the region for the Americans. They flexed their muscles when they needed to. They ran into a Mexico side that's well coached, well oiled, and, and is experienced. And that's what it comes down to. And we talked about it. 13 players for the United States making their Gold Cup debut. 11 of them making their first competitive match debut for the United States in this Gold Cup. So at the end of the day, they probably were beaten by a better team. I don't think they were the better team on the night for the entire 90 minutes. Mexico was better than them in the, in the second 45 minutes. U.S. had them beat in the first half. For the U.S., Nations League A will include Cuba and Canada in October and November. For Mexico, Bermuda and Panama in their first Nations League Welcome campaign. The champions of the 2019 CONCACAF Gold Cup, Mexico. Mexico takes the stage. The spotlight's on them as it is deserved. This incredible run under Tata Martino continues. It's been a calendar year of winning and advancing. What can you say about this Mexican side? And without Chucky Lozano and Miguel Layun and Carlos Vela takes a step away, Chicharito go down the list and, and you can go on and on. But ultimately the group that was assembled in this Gold Cup got the job done and returned the trophy back to Mexico for a record eighth time. I think that's the scariest part is that they were missing some of their biggest names and they still found a way to get it done. Now it didn't come without a little bit of nerves along the way. Penalties against Costa Rica, a shaky, shaky, shaky semifinal against Haiti in which they barely escaped with their lives. But even missing all those big names, most of them are towards the end of their career. They still have a lot of bright young talent. Carlos Rodriguez, just 22 years of age. You have Jonathan Dos Santos, he's 29. He's towards the latter end of his career. Edson Alvarez in the middle of the park, he's 21. He'll be around for a while. Jesus Gallardo is going to take over for Miguel Ayun at the outside back position. You would figure Uriel Antuna, 21 years old. You maybe would like to see him with his parent club in Manchester City in the next couple of years. Salcedo, only 25 years of age along the back line. So, not only were they missing some of their bigger pieces and they're going to be looking to those when they head to the World Cup in the next cycle in Qatar, but also just even further down the line, there's a lot of young talent like the United States, and there's a reason why the U.S. and Mexico have been the classic CONCACAF as they continually just pump in good talent, cycle in and cycle out. And the scariest part is that this wasn't even the full squad for Mexico, still champions. Tata Martino caressing a trophy that he'll bring back to Mexico tonight. Step forward for Mexico in this tournament. And the last man walking, the captain, Andres Guardado. Rumored that Martino was targeting him when he was at the helm of Atlanta. Through Atlas, Valencia, PSV, Matisse, four World Cups. He's got a winner's medal. And now he picks up his ultimate prize. Mexico 
Gold Cup champions in 2019 for a record eighth time. It really is impressive from a group that had no direction in that World Cup, even though they got out of their group that featured the likes of Sweden and Germany. There was no direction in the attacking third, and I, I think you can put all that to bed. This is a team where you know what they're trying to accomplish when they get deep into the opposition's part of the field, and it's only gonna get better with time, and the same goes for the United States. It's only gonna get better with time, and they're gonna be two great representatives of CONCACAF moving forward. For our entire team in Chicago, Tyler Terrence alongside Mike Watts saying thanks for watching and so long.